Hello and welcome to the second of these talks on Tchaikovsky's Fourth Symphony. And this one is called Follow the Fate, Brackets Motif. So we saw last week how Tchaikovsky, for once, actually wrote down a programme. He says how um, he thinks that you shouldn't need a programme, that the music actually speaks for itself, but because he is talking to his patron, the Dejt of Mech, he writes a program note and he talks about this fate motif. So to start with today we're going to follow that through the symphony and then we'll move on and see how the symphony hangs together around this central idea. So of course famously this is how the symphony starts with a monophonic rendition of the fate motif by the horns and then all the rest of the brass join in. Let's have a listen to that. So let's have a look at what Tchaikovsky's up to here. So I said it starts with the horns. To be fair to the bassoons, of course, they're playing as well. Um, it's a very common orchestration technique that to have um, bassoons doubling horns. They blend very well together. And um, you don't, I'm afraid, <laughs> sorry to say bassoonists out there, you don't generally hear the bassoons, but what it does do is fill out the tone. And um, it also gives a bit of support to the horns because the bassoons don't have the same difficulty with the potential to split notes and so on. Of course, horn players won't like me saying that either. So I think what I'm going to do is move on. So the horns are in F. And as we can hear, they're playing in unison with the bassoons. So the first note that we hear is an A flat. Now, there is a direct comparison, actually, between what Tchaikovsky is doing here and uh, what Beethoven does at the beginning of his Fifth Symphony, uh, where he's famously reported, Beethoven, and this is, is reported as having said that ba 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 bum is how fate knocks at the door. I say it's reported because the person who reported that was notoriously unreliable and in fact is a proven liar in a number of instances. And this is a man called Schindler, who helped Beethoven in his old age, um, and he sort of played up his own um, importance to Beethoven. He was important to Beethoven, but all of his stories are not necessarily reliable. Anyway, we're not talking about Beethoven, we're talking about Tchaikovsky. But Tchaikovsky um, is, I think, here deliberately echoing the Beethoven. Um, and the the triplet rhythm, da-da-da-da, is, I think, is, um, is a, a homage to Beethoven. But um, the other interesting comparison is that with Beethoven is a symphony in C minor and it starts with the notes G and E flat. And so actually in the beginning of Beethoven 5 you can't tell what the key is. And we have a similar thing here because we have an A flat and there's no other information we probably hear that as a tonic. So that when in bar three it goes down to the F, that starts to readjust the way that we hear the figure. And Tchaikovsky actually does a fair bit of playing around with our sense of tonality in this introduction. Now, so we have a repeated note, fanfare figure, triplet figure, homage to Beethoven. I think actually the rhythm that is going to be most important as the symphony goes on is this dotted rhythm. Ba -dum, ba -da -dum. So we've got some um, dotted quaver, semi-quaver within a triplet, 
and then a sort of augmented version of that dotted crotchet quaver and that is repeated in bar four. Then uh, it goes down a scale bar. Do, do, do. Now then, let's just go on to the next page. So we go. it's a scale of F minor from to where, what we're looking at at the moment. C, A flat, G, F, down to E flat. So this is sort of melodic minor feel to it. Down to D flat, keeps going down the scale and the scale ends on an E natural. And against the E natural, the A flat comes in again. Now, on the page, that is a diminished fourth, E natural to A flat. But what we really hear is a major third. And so the A flat is in actually sort of being reinterpreted as a G sharp at this point. So it's quite an, ex an extraordinary tonal um, trick. We start in A flat, F minor, the next thing we hear, E major, a long way away from each other. Okay, and then this bass line continues to descend. E goes down to D, to D flat, to C flat, to A flat, and then down to F flat, which of course enharmonically is um, E natural. Um, and each one of those steps reinterprets the way that we hear this A flat. So in this bar, what we hear is sort of E major harmony. Now in this bar, we've got D natural, F and A flat. So it's a diminished triad. Diminished triads are tonally uncertain. So we're not quite sure what's going on there. And then here, A flat, D flat and F. So it's reinterpreted now as a chord of D flat, D flat major, and the A flat is the fifth of the chord. Then the C flat means that that is a chord of D flat with a seventh. So like a dominant seventh chord. And then here, that dominant seventh chord doesn't resolve as we would expect. Really, by right, a C flat should fall onto a B flat, but it doesn't. It falls down onto an A flat, so that makes that harmony A flat major. Then this, the F flat and the C flat, make that a chord of F flat major. And harmonically, F flat major is E major, and of course that marries up with what we had in this bar. Over the page, I'm going to have to slightly shrink this. Ooh, there we go. And that E major chord is repeated. And then at this point, when all of the orchestra comes in, this is the first moment that we have had every instrument. I would wish that top thing would go away, but it's not. Oh, there we are. Right. Every instrument of the orchestra plays a very short. Um, unexpected chord and it's unexpected because it is basically diminished again. Let's have a look at what we've got. So we've got a D natural in the bass, we have a B natural on top, we have F and do we have a G sharp somewhere? Yes, there we are in the second trombone and it'll be other places as well. So that's basically a diminished seventh. Again, tonal uncertainty. The diminished seventh is a very unstable chord. The uh, A flat gets repeated. So we're sort of hanging on to this pitch, which has been the main pitch all the way through so far. The bass again falls down by a semitone. And now we have a chord which I know some of you will recognise, D flat in the bass, B natural on top. So that is an augmented sixth, though this chord is now an augmented sixth chord. What we expect of an augmented sixth chord is that that B natural will rise up by a semitone to C and that that D flat will fall by a semitone to C and we will end up on a dominant chord in F minor which is the key that we're in. Does that happen? No, it doesn't. <laughs> of course not. Because we get the A flat hammered away again, just in the horns. They don't need the bassoons now. I don't know why, but no bassoons. And this chord here is another interpretation of this note as part of 
E major. So augmented sixth chord here, we expect it to go to E minor, sorry, we expect it to go to F minor, but it doesn't. It goes on to a chord of E major. And it's a chord of E major in second inversion. The bass note is the B. So E major, we've got B at the bottom, E and G sharp on top. Second inversion chords are not stable. When you hear a second inversion chord, you expect it to move on to something else. So although that is just a major chord, because the fifth of the chord is in the bass, it doesn't feel, feel stable. We want it to move on. Again, we have that repeated A flat. Remember the horns are in F, so that is an A flat. Hi, this is me from the future dropping into my video to correct something that I have realized is a misprint in the score that I've got here from IMSLP. Because this chord here doesn't make sense. And it doesn't make sense because that note there is not for the cellos. The cellos are playing A flat with the double basses, and that should be in the violas, and it is an E natural. Um, this is my score, which has got the proof. I don't know if you can see that. Doesn't matter. That's what it should be. So um, that means that what I said when I was trying to explain this note in the cellos is just wrong. What we have got is A flat, E natural, C natural. That's all the notes that there is, that there are, I should say. And that means that that chord is an augmented triad. Augmented triad is a very exciting and um, sort of thrilling sound. Uh, but it sounds better when it's just three notes and there isn't a wrong note in the cellos. So this is me from the future saying goodbye and handing back to me from the past. And eventually here we get to the chord of F minor. And of course there, there is our chord of F minor. It's the, f it's the home key of the symphony and it is piano. Let's just quickly remind ourselves, have we had a chord of F minor up to this point? And the answer to that is no. No chord of F minor. So we're in bar 20, and this is the first time we have heard the tonic triad of um, the whole symphony. And we've had all sorts of interpretations of this key note, the A flat. So, I mean, it's actually, it's a very exciting, in harmonic terms, what Tchaikovsky is doing here is very exciting. It's creating a lot of harmonic tension. Anyway, we settle on to F minor, it's quiet, and then after all the noise that we've had, we're down to just two instruments of the orchestra. Now, remember it says A2, that means that there are going to be two clarinets playing that and two bassoons. So four people are playing and they're playing a line in unison. So after these big chords and this loudness, we're down to a very simple single line in octaves. Okay, and all of this is in F minor. This sort of carries on the tune that the uh, we've just had here. So bam, ba da 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 dum, de dum ba dum. But the character, because it's piano and because it's orchestrated so thinly, the character is very different. It's very sorrowful. De dum ba da de da dum. And then we just have this semitone that uh, is repeated over and over. And of course, that is going to be the germ of the uh, first movement form that carries on and so on. So that is the first appearance of the fate motif. Um, and the last thing I'm going to say now, just to remind you about the dotted rhythm and just look along here, dotted rhythms all over the place. We'll come back to that when we look at the first movement in more detail. So let's now look at the second time that we see the fate motif. <laughs>
So it's a very dramatic moment here. We've been uh, in full sort of uh, development mode, lots of excitement going on around that. Again, we'll look at that in more detail shortly. And then everything is interrupted. We've been, as you can see from the key signature, and there's a lot to talk about here. Essentially, we're in B major, which is miles and miles away from F minor. Um, everything settles down onto the semitone uh, with the dotted rhythm. So we're sort of familiar from, with that already. Um, and we've been, as I say, we've been listening in B major, and when the trumpets come in, suddenly it's B minor. So Tchaikovsky's um, idea here is to show the sort of um, the unexpected nature of fate, of fate, and he does that with an unexpected change of tonality. It's a very simple trick, but it's an effective trick. You've been in a major key, suddenly you're in a minor key. Um, and I do like seeing timp parts. I think it's the timp, yes, this is con tutta forza. You play that as loud as you possibly can. Um, and then at this point, we have another really good harmonic reimagining of the uh, fate motif. Remember, the, the first time we heard it, it was all on um, A flats. Now we are on a D. D and A flat is a tritone apart, so that's pretty well as far away as you can get. And then over this B pedal, so we've been in B, the B is our tonic um, note, so it's a tonic pedal, we have this very unexpected chord of C major. So you've got C major over a chord of, uh, over a note B. It's very, um, very dramatic indeed. And then that uh, sort of resolves itself here onto a dominant seventh uh, back in B. Um, now, for the sake of completeness, and I don't like leaving things unexplained, that C major chord is really what you might call Neapolitan harmony. Now, what we mean by Neapolitan is that it's on the flattened supertonic. So the key that we're in is B, the supertonic of B is C sharp, so the flattened supertonic is C natural. That means, and the word we use for that is Neapolitan, flattened supertonic. So there we are, that's the next entry of the fate motif, and very dramatic it is. <laughs> So here we have a very dramatic entry by the trumpets. Again, triple F, Tchaikovsky likes his um, dynamics to be <laughs> really uh, meant. And they come in playing the theme this time, starting on the note E. And around us, the music has gone into basically A minor. 
So a very dramatic entry by the trumpets, blasting through very uh, busy texture, very loud texture. Just look around the page, you see everybody else is really going for it. Um, now because we're in, sorry to scroll back like that, because we are in um, A minor, the theme has been changed here. Uh, they're now going down a major third. So to start off with, it was a minor third. When we started, I'll just go to the piano. I hope you can hear this. And now. So a little change of the motive because of the tonality of um, the key that we're in and the, how it sits within the chord. And then we carry on and we have the theme once again. And you can see we've changed key. We're now in B flat minor. An awful lot's going on. Obviously this is sort of development type material. So there's a lot of key change and they come in playing um, an F. Trumpets in F sound a fourth higher than they're written. It's one of the few transposing instruments where what you hear is higher than what's written. Mostly with transposing instruments, you expect to hear lower. Okay. And again, it's been, the interval is a major third down because of where it sits. Basically what Tchaikovsky's done here is at the beginning, the A flat is the third of the chord of F minor. So you go from the third of the chord of F minor down to the root of the chord of F minor. Now, because he's using the dominant as the first note, so when we were in A minor, the E was the first note, and you go down a third, you get E to C, and that's a major third. So it's because he's using a different um, part of the triad as the first note that we get this difference. So there it is in B flat, um, and once again here. Now we're sort of in the right key area here. It's quite hard to see, but if you do a, the second violins are quite a good example. They're playing A flat, G, and F. So that's the the first three steps of a scale of F minor, we are sort of in F, and the timp is doing a nice F pedal, um, and the trumpets are now hammering out the note F. Just look down at the bass, all the bass instruments are doing, outlining a diminished third, D flat to B natural. Um, those are actually notes from um, the augmented sixth chord in F minor. So if you have D flat as the bass note of the chord, an augmented sixth above D flat is B natural. So that's how that works. They're just sort of outlining part of the augmented sixth harmony. And still got the, because the trumpets are starting on the dominant, sorry, no, they're now starting on the tonic, aren't they? because we're in F. Um, yes, it's another reinterpretation um, because the, uh, the, the note that they're starting on here now is the root note of F minor. Okay, and that brings us to the end of that interjection of the fate motif. So we now need to go on to the next one. Thank you. 
So at this point, what we have is very similar to the music that we had when uh, the Tchaikovsky had got into B major. Um, it's in fact, it's the same thing. Everything here has been sort of, uh, you can see the key signature is F major. We settled down onto a unison um, F with the semitone below it. The timpani plays a pedal F and unexpectedly, the winds and the trumpets come in on an A flat. This is a very good example of this sort of orchestration where there's instruments playing who are you really, um, and the recording that we're listening to at the moment, you cannot hear the woodwind because the trumpets are so dominant, but they are adding to the general volume and security. So there we have it. That's the, um, it is the theme, the fate theme back on its A flat form that we had from bar one uh, with the pedal going through it. And then as we had in that sort of B major section, an unexpected reinterpretation. And this time the horns are playing it uh, an accord of D flat major. So this pedal, which in this bit sounds like a tonic pedal is reinterpreted as a median pedal. In other words, the F, which was the root of the chord of F minor, F, A flat, C, is now the third of a chord of D flat major, D flat, F, A flat. Um, another reinterpretation. And that fades away once again, and we're sort of now in coda material. And for a little bit, we're in a very nice, gentle key of D flat major. This is very beautiful writing. All that drama is sort of just fades away. And at the very end of the coda, when everything's speeding up and we're racing towards the end, we have just snippets of the beginning of the fate motif tossed around the winds and the brass. So the horns come in there, they have it on an F, and then they have it here on a uh, C flat, isn't it? Yes, C flat. So tritone. Now, actually, when we look at the first movement, this tritone relationship is really fundamental. So this is no accident. F, C flat, and then, please go away, D natural, and then back to F. F, B natural, D natural. And actually, those three notes are part of a diminished triad. And again, diminished triads are important. So that is the fate motif as it appears in the first movement. And it is a dramatic punctuation point as the movement goes on. Now, having said that the fate motif is something that unites the whole symphony, in the second movement, it doesn't happen at all. This is what Tchaikovsky says about the second movement, and we'll look about we'll look at that in detail when we look at the second movement. Third movement, no fate motif. Fourth movement, the fate motif does appear, and let's have a quick look at that now.
And then we this is our last um, acquaintance with the fate theme. Again, it comes when everything's been very dramatic and loud and energetic. You see the flutes, uh, the oboes, clarinets, violins, violas, cellos. We're all playing around the notes of A flat and E flat. And the tune that's in the bass instruments is going from A flat down to G flat, A flat down to G flat to F. So it's sort of A flat harmony with a slight dominant feeling to it. And then unexpectedly, this line in the bass part, I'm looking at the tuba, but it's all the bass instruments, G flat, F, E natural, another two semitone step thing. And as we had at the beginning, um, the A flat of the faint motif is treated as if it is a G sharp and we hear E major harmony. And look in the strings here, you can see very clearly that's a chord of E major. We have a solo cymbal crash. This is a significant moment. So E major. And in fact, this is a direct um, reference back to the first page of the symphony. After the E major chord, diminished harmony, augmented sixth harmony, going on to A flat again going on to a chord of E major, and here, diminished chord, look, all the percussion are in. Settling down onto the chord of E major in second inversion. The sort of augmented chord that we had at the beginning. F minor, and here, the German sixth chord. German augmented sixth, D flat, F, A flat, B natural. And it's on that very uncertain harmony that Tchaikovsky leaves the fate motif, really just hanging on. Tails away in the horns, we get a little diminished triad outline in the strings, B natural, A flat, F. This is the, the augmented sixth chord, broken chord now. Instead of being played as a vertical harmony, it's played as a horizontal line. The, the D flat going down to the B natural and the D flat tends down, the B natural tends up and we settle on a pedal note in the timps and then joined by the double basses and that's a dominant pedal which is going to take us home in F major and everything's going to be all right. So there we have it, that is Tchaikovsky's fate motif and the way that it goes through the symphony. It's a very dramatic um, musical idea uh, because of the repeated note, because of the rhythmic element to it. It's instantly recognisable every time that it comes through the symphony. What is perhaps odd to think about is that it doesn't happen that much. Um, now, there's probably, I think arguably, Tchaikovsky uses it just the right amount because if you kept on um, having everything interrupted by this motive it would become very predictable and it wouldn't have the dramatic effect that it does have the way that he's left it. Um, but it is interesting that when he's writing to Nadezhda about the symphony, he says it's a symphony about fate, that there is quite a lot of the symphony which doesn't directly address the musical idea that is in this motto theme, the da-da-dum-bum-bum, I think the thing that he uses most through the symphony is the dotted rhythm. And actually, you will see that in every movement. Um, so possibly that works in our minds and in our ears as a little reminder that this fate motif is in the background. But for large parts of the symphony, it really is in the background. So next time I will look at the first movement in more detail. A couple of you have already handed in pieces of work, which is really good of you because I had to ask you to do that, but well done. And uh, one, one of you has commented that uh, you think that Tchaikovsky did most work on the first movement. 
and you're probably right, it is certainly the longest movement. It is um, very ambitious in the way that he uses sonata form and the way that he um, balances out the keys. So uh, maybe for next time, have another listen to the first movement and start to think about the keys that Tchaikovsky goes through. Um, very helpfully, he does change key signatures. So even if you just go through reading the key signatures, you will get a long way to understanding what's going on. You will have heard me talk about in the past this idea of tonal balance, that if you go one way sharp, you balance it with a move flat. So you could maybe look at the first movement in those terms as well. Um, there will be follow up tutorial sessions on this. Please look in your Google calendars and in classroom and I will post links. And the next talk on Tchaikovsky 4 will be with you next Monday. Thank you very much.